Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both. That is Drew Galloway. We are here to recap the Wildcat win over LSU today. It, I mean, it's been a week for K-State basketball, athletics, uh, anything associated with K-State. And the fact that K-State was able to go on the road and get a win is important. Look, I don't think LSU is a very good basketball team. I'm sure a lot of other people also think that. But it's a road game. These these early season games, really any road non-conference game, unless it's some major matchup, there can be some sleepiness to it. Certainly sounds like that was the case uh, down in Baton Rouge. And K-State was able to come out. They looked focused. And similar to the Villanova game, it seemed like they came out and were ready to play for the full 40 minutes. Now, there was a little lull in there in the second half where things didn't go their way, and they let it slip a little bit. I think it got all the way down to a three-point game after they led by 17. But I will give them some you know, benefit of doubt here. Some of, the, some of the calls were a little touchy that didn't go their way, and uh, just some fortunate bounces for LSU during that stretch. But they rebounded, pushed the lead back up to double digits, and basically held a 10-point lead for the last however long of the game until they got a couple of buckets at the end there, and they end up winning 75-60 to 60 as the final score. So, uh, Drew, just lead off with what your big takeaway from the win over LSU is. I mean, it's not going to look spectacular by – March probably because I like you said I just don't think that LSU is very good really at all right now. I mean, that Syracuse blew the doors off of LSU earlier this season. Yeah, and Syracuse isn't very yeah, good. I was gonna say, and Syracuse isn't very good. But when you consider the circumstances and everything that's happened at K State over the last <laughs> three days, and even before that, playing two overtimes, two overtime games before, and then you play again in overtime on Tuesday night. It, it's more impressive and one of the most impressive wins of, I think, the Jerome Tang era, if you consider the circumstances. Like, the, the team that they played, not very good, but it could have been so easy for K-State to be on the opposite side of a game like today where it looked like LSU just didn't have it, LSU didn't have a lot of energy, and, and it, it seemed like K-State was ready and they were ready to roll, and it, it's something that kind of got brought up to me uh, in the first half, maybe it was a good thing that K-State got away from Manhattan and got away from everything and got to go on the road. And, I mean, they it, they came out and they just put it to LSU right away. And I think that's when everybody was like, okay, like this is kind of going to be how the game goes. Yeah, look, I here I'll, I'll be transparent in, in what I was going to say here. I, a win of any kind was going to be good uh, on this road trip for K-State. So it's good that they went out and got it. I I was I mean there would have been a realm if they had lost after getting a 17 point lead uh, I think I have a much different attitude but I did think to myself beforehand I was like you know if the game plays out this way or that way how am I going to feel I would have had a tough time holding a lot against them if they had gone out and lost this game cuz for all the reasons you said that's not really a great excuse in the grand scheme of things but you add the Naquan Tomlin situation on top of it and everything that has gone down with that, um, that certainly could weigh pretty heavy on them. There could be, it could go one of two ways. Either these guys completely shut down because they feel like they've been screwed in this process and that their teammate and their friend got screwed, or it could have gone the total opposite way and they're way up over the top about it and they say, let's go out there and get this done. And they're way too eager. I think they handled it appropriately. Um, I would imagine that the message that Jerome Tang gave was just like, hey, let's only focus on going out there, taking care of our business. Like we can handle all the other stuff later. You get a week off after this one from playing games. So I honestly good on them for going out and getting it done. But I, I wouldn't have dinged them too hard had they lost. Oh, no. You know, if they blew a 17 point lead, I would have been pretty hard on them. Like, OK, if you had enough juice to get up 17, you should have enough juice to finish it off. And fortunately, a couple of big things came through for them. They grabbed 13 offensive rebounds in the game. Uh, they out-rebounded LSU. I think the final tally ends up being like 39-26, to 26, maybe. Yeah. And then another benefit was LSU shot it really well to start the game. Uh, they came out of the gates firing, had some buckets going. I was like, oh, okay. I, I, K-State doesn't always play the best defense, uh, and they're a little slow rotating at times, but LSU was striping it. 
The, the Tigers shot 59% in the first half and 44% from three in the second half, just a total reversal of fortune. Uh, 29% from the field is what K-State held them to, and only two of 11 from three, which is good for 18%. And that's significant because in those runs that LSU had and trying to get back in it, if they knock down one or two threes, it's a totally different feel, and the heat's on even more. K-State and LSU traded moments of just not being able to put the ball in the hole, and fortunately, LSU, even when K-State was struggling, they weren't able to find it all that much, and uh, then K-State regained it. They locked in, and they made some more plays. So uh, props to K-State for doing that, and uh, probably the number one individual shout-out should probably go to Cam Carter, who goes to uh, – his, his home state delivers a strong performance. 21 points for the Cats in the game. I will say, though, this has been the story of Cam Carter this season. He's the opposite of Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry yeah. does everything after the first half. Cam Carter does everything in the first half. 19 in the first half for Carter, 3 of 5 from 3. He goes 0 of 7 with two points in the second half. He also had three turnovers then. Uh, what did you make of the Cam Carter performance? Uh, I mean, it, it it was kind of a roller coaster, and like we've kind of seen this from Cam Carter all season. Like you said, it, I think when Quez Glover comes back from injury, Cam Carter probably gets the best um, out of that. In the sense of, I mean, Cam Carter played again thirty nine minutes tonight or today, so like it, he will be the one that will get a little bit of rest because you could just tell that his legs were just gone. Because I think in the last three games coming into this he was over 40 minutes yeah he was over 40 minutes in the previous three games so like now when quest glover comes back hopefully by the end of the month he will be able to get some rest and hopefully you'll see those shots go in in the second half because it's not like he was taking bad shots or not just not getting open he was just miss he was missing the same shots he was hitting in the first half and i think part of that was just he just didn't have his legs yeah we'll uh we'll, we'll see i I just think it's – Cam Carter has been a better player this year. He's taken some steps in the right direction. I think there are just times where we'll see that Cam Carter – he's he is close to being what he is going to be. Like, it's almost a finished product with him, and he's not going to be a guy that consistently gets you 15 to 20 points in a game, and it's going to be inefficient at times, and it's going to have some serious ups and downs. But if he can give you that burst, and obviously it was huge in the first half because it helped them build – a good lead that's fine with me because you have enough enough other guys on this team that I feel good in that they can hang on to a lead even despite the fact that they gave a little bit of it back to LSU today and Arthur Kaluma is another guy that deserves some praise I mean he comes out has a strong game again uh, he ends up with 17 points if you go back to the the games that they played in uh you know where were they the Bahamas mm -hmm. uh he's he's averaging I think close to 19 points a game uh since that point so yeah, since and that's with a 12 point game in there he's playing great basketball he's being more assertive and today he came through because he was efficient when he did it. he was six of eight uh for 17 points and 11 boards again since jerome ting even called him out and said that he needed to buy in after the bellerman game that's kind of when we see in the flip switch for arthur kaluma and he's playing at an all big 12 clip right now i mean he's had two double doubles now. He's averaging around 19 and like I think close to nine rebounds in this stretch. And we're, we're kind of seeing him take a step. And you almost want him to be a little bit more aggressive. I mean, he, he only took eight shots today and got 17 points. And, and it's again back to what I keep saying. Once he you see him make threes like he has been the last two games, because he was three or four again tonight, he's gonna be hard to guard because you're gonna have to actually respect that pump fake that he has uh when he's about to shoot the three. Another guy that I think deserves a shout out, honestly, probably the the second most impressive performance of the night behind uh, Cam Carter is is what Will McNair was able to do offensively. They got him in position. Uh, he had a couple of easy dunks early on in the game. He ends up in double figures with thirteen. He was efficient as well. And unlike his other big counterpart, David Gasson, he did make most of his free throws when he went to the line. K State was fifteen of twenty two from the free throw line tonight. David Gasson was With 0 of 6. And he, every time he went, it just felt like there wasn't a chance there. Uh, that's a concerning thing moving forward because last year 
K-State was able to use David Gasson, but obviously it was less minutes and his role in the offense was much lesser. So he wasn't in position as many times to be a guy that had the ball and get fouled. Now, I mean, the way he moves and the way that he handles things, he becomes a pretty integral part of the offense for K-State because he's, I mean, he's one of the five best players that they're going to put on the floor considering, you know, position and everything else that goes into it. And I, I don't know why if anytime David Gasson touches the ball, I would be hacking him. I would just at, unload at the, on him. At the end of the games, it's it's gonna be a problem if he's still out there. I mean, he came into today shooting 40% from the free throw line, and that's just gonna go down after being 0 of six. Yeah, no, so it's, it, you, it's not great. They they need to get his mind right. But like you said, like Will Will McNair, probably the unheralded uh player of the game for this game. I mean, he was five of six from the field. I I had him as one of uh, the players that I thought was really going to shine today because I liked his matchup with Will Baker and how important that was going to be. He was giving Will Baker fits on the defensive end. Like Will Baker had no room. He held Will Baker to just eight points on three of eight shooting. So it was one of Will Baker's worst games of the season. So you kind of got to see kind of everything come together for Will McNair, who has been a pleasant surprise so far this season, I thought. I mean, I yeah, I wasn't sure what to expect when he ended up committing to K-State. But you're seeing a big that has a soft touch around the basket and can move pretty well. And you hate bringing this up because it was last year, but God, Will McNair, if they would have had him in the FAU game in the Elite yeah. Eight, K-State probably wins. Like Will McNair is probably going to be more matchup dependent uh, as a big, but you have to love what you're seeing from him right now. Yeah, he's, I mean, I, I've said it multiple times, but he has already given K-State more than I think I anticipated him giving all year, really. I didn't, I just, when he came in and you look at what he's done in the past, I, I did not see him being a guy that now, I mean, he's been starting games for a while, so I definitely didn't anticipate that. Um, but what he's given him, he's, he's gone out there and he's helped him in this non-conference stretch. And you're right. Like it's going to depend on the matchup, but when the matchup is good, Will McNair can help this team. I think the one thing that you can look at and, and point to, that's going to hold this team back in a lot of ways is all of these guys that are out there on the floor, whether we saw them last year or they're new to the team, but they are either giving something that we didn't expect from them or they have improved in some way. The issue is they all have significant shortcomings that when they do rear their head, it's going to be trouble for K-State. You, you don't have a single consistent player on this team. The hope would be that Arthur Kaluma is getting close to that point, um, but we'll just see. I, everybody else, there's a lot of hit and miss to their game, but when they're hitting, things are coming together and making this look like a better basketball team. Oh, yeah. And, like, I mean, I'll throw this out there. Like, I – I was very hesitant, and I even told you this before the Villanova game. I didn't think that that was going to be a Will McNair game, but he proved me wrong. And so you were kind of seeing everybody kind of coming along and gelling together. And I, I'm interested to see kind of where K State goes in the net and in Ken Palm after this game because the advanced metrics are so weird uh, with how they roll sometimes. Like K State went down in the net after beating Villanova. And Villanova dropped like six spots, I think. So like, I'm interested to see how everything looks after this game because th I thought this was the best. This was the closest to a good 40 minutes that they've had all season. Because, I mean, there was that four or five minute stretch that was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, Villanova, they, uh, they're they still Ken Palm 34. They've got a, a big opportunity tonight against UCLA. We'll see how that ends up playing out now. It's not like UCLA is a world beater this season but there are only two losses they've played pretty tight games with marquette and gonzaga so we'll see how it uh, ends up working out there but good win for k-state 75 to 60 they get to eight and two now just three non-conference games remain that will be nebraska next sunday at home that'll be the first game back in bramlage since all the naquan tomlin stuff went down and then Thursday, so a week from this Thursday, they will be in Kansas City to face those nasty Wichita State Shockers. Just, Super the, most, Bowl. just the most vile, disgusting school on the planet. Uh, and then they will eventually finish things out just after New Year's with Chicago State. So 
Uh, that is what it looks like for K-State. We will have plenty more on the Cats and the Tigers come tomorrow. Myself and Drew will be back with KSU underscore fan for a regular Sunday show because we got a lot to talk about. Football, basketball, not football and basketball <laughs> stuff going on in administrative offices. Whatever it is, we're going to talk about it tomorrow on the Sunday show. And then uh, we'll have shows all through next week with myself and DY. And based off the way things went this week, I think we were doing something almost every day. It would not surprise me if we've got more shows that just pop up out of nowhere. So plenty of content coming your way here on the KSO YouTube page. Also, always over at On3 with K-State Online. That's where you're going to find all the written work, great post-game stuff and uh, analysis and everything else you could want. And if you're on Twitter and you see all these cryptic messages and whatever else, you're like, what the heck is going on? Why is my school burning to the ground? Go to K-State Online, become a member, get on the message boards. You'll see what everybody's talking about. And you still may say to yourself, what the heck is going on? What are these people talking about? These folks are crazy. Uh, that's that's all very possible, but you also may learn some serious things and get great information. So that is the pitch for you to come over to K-State Online if you are not doing so already. So for Drew Galloway, I am Mason Voth. Thank you for watching and listening to K-State Online.